power that in the hands of an irresponsible driver can kill. the other hand, can be of great service when controlled by those who are careful and considerate. Each morning as the sun rises, a great green fleet, thousands of telephone cars, leave garages all over the country to provide more and better telephone service. Driving these cars is serious business, and as the number of cars increase and traffic conditions become worse, the drivers bear an ever-increasing responsibility for the safety of themselves and others. Today, throughout the country, 90 people will lose their lives in automobile accidents. Will they be anyone you know? While you are looking at this picture, one will die and three will be crippled for life. It happened yesterday too, and the day before. It will happen tomorrow, the next day, and the next. Why? Oh, they give lots of reasons. One says, I had the right of way. Another, he went through a red light. Or, he didn't signal. That's what they say, but actually, they didn't see. They didn't hear. They didn't think. It's human failures, not mechanical failures, that cause most accidents. A vehicle is designed for your safety and convenience. With regular inspection and proper maintenance, it's ready to take you safely wherever you wish under all kinds of weather and highway conditions. But don't forget the most important factor of all, the driver behind the wheel. For it's the driver who determines whether accidents have to happen. Look at this. Do things like this have to happen? Let's see where and how most of our accidents occur. At intersections. On curves. By bumper chasing. at parking spaces. And here's another common occurrence. When Joe left his truck, there was nothing behind it. It could have been a lot worse, Joe. And here's another. Tom has parked his truck on a grave. As he starts his first job, Tom's car goes on to the next job without him. the accident traps waiting for you. Can we avoid them? 
thousands of telephone men and women do year in and year out. They are the safe drivers, the men who respect the lives and the property of others. They are the drivers who see, who hear, and think. They know their car and report faulty conditions for repair, a responsibility of every driver. When they sit behind the wheel, they realize that they're driving 90 horses. You have seen a fellow take good care of a dollar screwdriver or other small tool. And then, a little later, do this. Safe drivers have a sense of values. To them, a car is a precision tool. More important, they have developed the habits of concentration, control, and courtesy. It's simple. Let's call them the three C's of defensive driving. Here is Bob Clark. Through his eyes, let's see what we mean by concentration. That was close, Bob. It's moments like that when accidents happen. Concentration means excluding everything but driving from our minds. Control is equally important. Now, if you can stand another short ride, let's go along with Bill Roberts. Bill, I see you're in the 20 mile zone. You're going too fast. You haven't got control. That sign is there for a purpose. Bill, you may not be as lucky the next time. Courtesy is another habit of the safe driver. Courtesy is just good sportsmanship. Now, Jim Riley prides himself on being a good sport. On the course, Jim is one of the nicest fellows you ever met. He doesn't think twice about letting the other fellows through. But in a car, Jim seems to change. Courtesy is forgotten. Now, don't be impatient, Jim. Don't try to drive around them. Hmm, aggravating, isn't it? Your driving reflects your character. Open, Jim, if you had a habit of being courteous.
concentration, control, and courtesy are the three C's of defensive driving. They keep drivers out of accident traps. Of course, every good driver knows that, in addition, there are other important fundamentals of good driving. It's the responsibility of each of us to be sure that mechanically all parts of our car are in proper condition to ensure safe driving. Make sure the seat is adjusted to your height. For comfort and control, grasp the wheel like this. It's called the 10 minutes to 4 grip. This grip provides maximum leverage and keeps the right hand close to the gear shift lever. When going down grade or stopping, use your engine to slow down your vehicle and your brakes merely to assist the engine. Think ahead. Begin to slow down early by taking your foot off the accelerator. Apply your brakes evenly and firmly. Disengage your clutch just in time to keep the engine from stalling. The parking brake is not intended for use in stopping or to slow down except in an emergency. It is designed to hold the vehicle when it's not moving. These fundamentals, plus the three C's, are the tools that safe drivers use at all times and particularly in locations where accidents are most likely to happen. Here is an example of defensive driving. This driver is approaching an intersection. He concentrates on his car, the car ahead, the car behind, and the car that's probably around the corner. He uses control, signals and slows down enough to allow time to look left, right, and left again. Whether the signal is with him or against him, he's courteous. Rights of way are meaningless if the other driver doesn't stop. When a view of an intersection is obstructed, the defensive driver is particularly careful. It is the driver's responsibility to get through intersections safely. Backing accidents can be avoided if, whenever possible, we park where we don't have to back. When backing into traffic, apply the three C's and prevent an accident. Back up slowly. Be ready to stop instantly. And be courteous if someone blocks your path. Watch for other cars, bicycles, and children at play. When parking at a curb, make sure there's enough space. Parallel the car ahead. Give the proper hand signal. Make sure the path is clear and back slowly, cutting your wheels. Watch those fenders and bumpers. When you have backed about half the length of your car, straighten your wheels. Turn them in the opposite direction as you move into the parking space. When you're parked, 
your car should be a few inches from the curb. In leaving a parking space, look ahead and to the rear to make sure it's safe to enter traffic. Do not depend only on your hand signal and rear vision mirror. When passing parked cars, has this ever happened to you? There's a warning if you know what to look for. Watch for this definite front wheel signal. It can be seen a hundred feet ahead. If there's someone in the driver's seat, be careful, as he may suddenly pull out from the curb. In parking on a grade, you'll find your car where you left it. If you tow in the wheels to the curb, set the handbrake, make sure it's set, turn off the ignition, remove keys and lock the doors. In alleys, you will find a combination of many driving hazards. They are narrow and generally lined with fender benders. Remember these words, blind alley, every time you drive in or drive out of one. Now let's consider pedestrians. We know they will not always cross over at intersections, traffic lights, or within the marked lanes. The responsible driver recognizes this, and he drives accordingly. When following traffic, be ready for emergency stops. Allow a full car length distance between your car and the car ahead for each 10 miles of speed. Curves are serious accident traps. Never pass on a curve. Keep well to the right with your car under control. You never know what the other driver may do. When we cut in and out of traffic, follow too close or speed, we are gambling. And we have no right to gamble with lives and property. Next time you're tempted to exceed safe speed limits, remember a 90 horsepower engine can build up forces that brakes cannot control. The force of a head-on collision at 60 miles an hour is the same as driving your car off the roof of a 10-story building. Would you do this? No, you wouldn't. So why do this? These cars might just as well have been driven off a 10-story building. Nature often causes conditions that require added concentration, control, and courtesy. Winter driving calls for all defensive driving techniques. A snow-covered countryside can be beautiful, but to the safe driver, it spells danger. Clear vision is of first importance. This windshield is an accident maker. Traction is equally important. Spinning the wheels can be prevented by releasing the clutch pedal slowly with the car in second or high. Snow tires will help. The safe driver knows when chains are necessary. But he also knows that he cannot be overconfident just because he has on a good set of traction aids. We can only operate safely by driving at a speed consistent with road conditions. 
slow down when passing on a narrow road. Snowy and icy roads require looking farther ahead and giving yourself greater distance in which to stop. This means to approach intersections at greatly reduced speed. Winter driving can be safe driving if we meet each situation with our minds on our driving, the car under control, and courtesy as our guide. For all kinds of driving, the three C's will help us to cope with the unpredictable acts of others. Concentration keeping our mind on what we're doing. Control, driving the car instead of the car driving us. Courtesy, giving freely the right of way regardless of conditions. Wherever we are, north, south, east, or west, telephone people can help to prevent the destruction of life and property that occurs day after day. Wherever we travel, perform a courteous deed. Give freely the right of way or give aid in an emergency, it will be convincing proof that to telephone men and women, giving service is more than putting in instruments or answering calls. This is our safety creed. It's the creed of the defensive driver.